This week, let's talk about mid-latitude cyclones. Sounds scary, right? All I'm thinking of this movie Twister from like years ago with Helen Hunt. I have I would I have no idea about anything else but the movie Twister from the nineties. A lot of a lot of badness. Um, not not goodness, but more so badness. Wouldn't that be a tropical storm uh, somewhere around the equator? Probably like the October storm of in last year, but without snow and just hell everywhere, the trees down, like just everything down. Probably heavy wind damage, lots of uh, debris through houses, thrown cars, thrown people, perhaps. Mostly uh, depression, uh, nausea, probably constipation. These weather systems can reach 1,200 miles in diameter and travel more than 700 miles in one day for a period of three to 10 days. So why should you care? Well, consider that a textbook worthy mid-latitude cyclone passed right over our heads earlier this week. Did it really? It did? Oh, well then. Ooh, that would, that would explain the cramps. It's a league in the name like mid-latitude cyclone. Yeah. People are gonna think it's terrible. It's like, oh, run to the, sh- the mid-latitude cyclone shelters. <laughs> Yes, actually, the majority of significant weather that we experience here in western New York sprouts from mid-latitude cyclones. A mid-latitude cyclone is a relatively large weather system that comprises a low-pressure center, a cold front, and a warm front. And this whole system spins counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere. Dr. Gary Lash comments. Yeah, these wave cyclones or mid-latitude cyclones are driven from the western side of the country to the east by the jet stream, and they move at different speeds, and much of our weather is a result of that. And the passage of a mid-latitude or wave cyclone is manifested by, often at this time of the year especially, by rapid changes in weather. The warm front will come through one day, and that will bring temperatures up, and any snow that might be on the ground will melt. But then within a day or so, the trailing cold front will come through and we'll end up getting snow covered uh, within 24 or 48 hours of when we had been celebrating the advent of spring. Think of it this way. Picture a fence between the cold, dry Canadian atmosphere and warm, moist air from the Gulf of Mexico. That fence would probably fall somewhere close to Chautauqua County or any mid-latitude. That is, any latitude around 45 degrees north or south of the equator. Now, cold air tends to be heavier and stronger than moist, warm air. The fence is sort of broken by Canadian air, and it sort of jets out over the country. Where the fence was broken, a low-pressure center is formed. It's like a partial vacuum that begins sucking everything into it. This is the powerhouse of the system. When looking at this on a map, we see that it looks like a shark's fin. The fin itself is made of warm air, behind the fin is cold air, and at the tip of the fin, a low-pressure center. The best part about this fin? It always pushes east, right towards us. The leading edge of the fin will bring steady showers and warmer conditions. The backside will create thunderstorms and colder temperatures. And if you're at the tip, exactly what we saw at the beginning of this week. Showers, winds, more showers, then snow. A special thanks to our street interviewees, Josh Martin, Ben Frazier, and Kaylee Champlin. For High Noon Friday, I'm Nick Gunner.